Welcome to this podcast segment of A Beautiful Day to Learn. My name is Abigail at samahan niyo ko with this second part discussing the basic parts of the campus paper. So part 2 na tayo, no? And the share ko na sa inyo previously yung ating numbers 1 to 11 and we also had a recap of the first 11 parts. So yung recap natin na yon ay ito. Ayan, so ganyan karami and hopefully naaalala nyo pa yung ating nameplate, headline, banner, news story, lead, deck, kicker, byline, ear, teaser, and jump line. At ipagpapatuloy natin yan today. We are off to numbers 12 to 22 and this is it. Number 12 is the cat line or the caption. This is the text accompanying the photos and other artwork and meron kasi tayong mga readers na very fast-paced. Kumbaga, okay na sa kanila makita lahat ng photos. Because, alam nila, nakasama ng photos ay mga captions or cat lines. And since photos are the ones which are very appealing, kahit hindi na nila basahin yung mismong news story, as long as my cat line nakasama itong photos or illustrations, gets na nila kung ano yung stories. Kaya po, as future SPA or student paper advisor, always ensure that your photojournalists and illustrators also know how to write cat lines or captions. Kumbaga, we always promote basic English structure to them. On screen, ang cat line na nakikita nyo ay nasa ilalim lang ng photo with a minimalist design. Simple lang, black font or typography over white. Here naman, the cat line is separated using the block box. So, na-separate siya because of the color black. Number 13, columns. Technically speaking, this would be the vertical division. Hindi pa ito yung tinatawag na column writing, ha? Iba pa yon. The column divides the newspaper. Kasi mahirap naman kung walang hati. Ang eyes natin, mas strain by reading from left to right ng dere-derecho from the top of the page down to the bottom. That's why columns were created to give chance for our eyes to have further or other movements. See other colors through photos, see different boxes, and see also illustrations. Stated here is that many national papers are divided into eight columns, while a typical school paper is divided into five columns. But then let's check. For DLSUD, they use six columns. For Adamson University, six columns then. This one also has six columns per page. So, na maintain yung number six, ha? And then the flare has three, two, and four columns. We can get something from here. As student paper advisors, you have to be very careful. If you are submitting your paper in a contest, then you need to follow the rules and regulations of newspaper editing and design. Well, I cannot dictate which is correct. But the contest rules ang dapat ninyong sundin. For this one, it is a lot better if there is a specific number of columns and variation will be done by following the divisibility rules. Ay, teka lang. May mat pala dito, no? Yes po. So, ayan. Ganyan ang mangyayari sa atin if there are no columns. Dere-derecho ang pagbasa. But if you prefer that your most number of columns is 6, other pages may be laid out in 3 pages, just like this one. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yan yung sample sa taas. And then sa baba naman niya ay 3 columns. We still maintain yung pagiging pantay nila. So again, kapag ang maximum mo ay 6, you can have other pages having 3 columns. If the most number of your columns is 4, so tulad nito, 1, 2, 3, 4, other pages may be laid out in 2 
columns naman. Well, makikita niyo naman kasi, if you take a value with columns, then mas madali pa rin mag-layout ng stories. Now, the question is, what if lima or five? Five columns. Other pages may follow the 2, 3 or 3, 2. Ano daw? This one follows the 3, 2. Ibig sabihan, 5 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then sa baba, itong column na to ay sinakop yung tatlo na nasa taas. So that's 3. Then this one, sinakop yung dalawa sa taas. 2. So 3 and 2. And this is the 2, 3 partner of the 5 columns. Now, ano nga ba yung tawag natin dito sa mga red circles or oblongs na to? This would be the number 14, which is the gutter or the white space between the columns of text on one page. Ako, personally, ang tawag ko dito, kanal. Kasi parang may kanal sa pagitan ng mga text. Number 15 is the fold. The fold is the imaginary vertical line that divides the newspaper into two equal parts. Medyo may ilang rules tayo when it comes to fold. Usually, we think of the regular fold kung saan lang talaga finold ng printing press yung ating papers. But we also have to think of the horizontal fold. This one. Here, you can see the center crossing the photos. Let us try to zoom in a little. Ayan yung ating imaginary fold. And kawawa naman yung photo. Kasi kung ifinold ang paper, kalahati lang ng photo yung makikita. So, dapat iwasan natin na ma-place doon sa ating imaginary fold yung mga photos or even the headlines. At dahil binanggit ko yung headlines, on screen ay tama naman yung example. Just make sure na hindi tatama talaga yung typography doon sa fold. Kasi our objective is, even if the reader folds the newspaper into smaller ones para mag-fit sa bulsa, gilid ng bag, nababasa pa rin po yung headlines. Buo pa rin yung photos. Number 16, you have the box. We just refer to box as news materials enclosed by, ayun nga, syempre, box. Ito po ay three news stories in a box. And then, number 17 is the folio. This can be seen on the upper part of the campus paper, which consists of the page number, date of publication, the name of the newspaper, yung iba yung logo sinasama nila. And one of the mistakes I committed as an SPA would be to forget the page numbers. As in, nalimutan ko siya. Yun pa, yun pa talaga ang nalimutan ko. So, wag natin kakalimutan yun, ha? One of the trends na nakikita natin sa ngayon is yung usage ng ating QR code. So, dito gumagamit sila ng QR code. So, scan mo lang, makikita mo na yung digital version ng newspaper na yun. Number 18 is the editorial proper or the soul of the paper. This is actually part of the editorial page, but this is considered as the stand of the paper on a particular issue, whether it is in the school, in the university, or the community, or even national news. Identified naman yan as editorial. Nakalagay talaga dun yung word na editorial. Number 19 is the editorial cartoon, which is a caricature emphasizing an issue. Usually, humorous yan or exaggerated, minsan nga colored pa talaga. It has the same function as the editorial. It stands by itself and is not necessarily a complement of the editorial proper. Well, sometimes it does, but it can actually stand alone or it should stand alone. Number 20 is the editorial liner. The editorial liner is a short statement or quoted saying place at the end of an editorial column or inside the editorial column to drive home a message. So, ito yung usually influential. Naka-highlight yan because it is being separated from the editorial. So, bigger fonts, in other words, this is the essence of that editorial. Number 21 is the opinion column written by the student columnist. Ito yung sariling boses na ng studyante. Kaya may picture to ng writer eh, para identify talaga kung kaninong opinion or boses ng galing 
yung mga nakalagay dyan. Pwede rin namang may name yung columns. So again, bakit may picture? So that you can easily identify. You can easily communicate. Especially if there is a specific topic na gusto mong iklaro or bigyan ng linaw. Alam mo, ito yung pupuntahan mong tao. Meron nga din tong disclaimer eh. Just by merely putting their picture serves also as a disclaimer that whatever it is written in there is not a reflection of the stand of the newspaper itself or the unit or the body. And lastly, we have the masthead. Dito natin makikita ang lineup ng bumubuo ng campus paper. Whether newbie or senior, nandiyan talaga sila. It also contains the nameplate, the logo, subscription if ever, and also other publication details such as is this a bi-monthly publication or published once every cent. And even the name of the advisor is also written here. Ayan, so recap lang ulit tayo. We have the cut line, the columns, the gutter, the fold, the box, the folio, the editorial proper, editorial cartoons, editorial liner, opinion column, and also the masthead. And if you would like to take a look at the samples which I have presented to you, kindly follow them on this website for you to see their layouts, style, and design of the campus papers. Once again, the sources I used for the examples came from ISU Networking Site, Heraldo Filipino for DLSUD, The Flare for CBSU Inus, The Gazette for CBSU Indang, the LPU Independent Sentinel for LPU Manila, the Gidon for Ateneo de Manila University, the Adamson Chronicle, Adamson University, the Augustinian University of San Agustin. That's it. Thank you very much and hoping you still learned something from today's discussion. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notification bell para lagi kang updated sa ating videos or lecture videos na ina-upload natin. Once again, this is Abigail of A Beautiful Day to Learn and see you on our next episode. We will be discussing the components of the masthead.